Hello friends and welcome back to House of Props. Continuing with the Mandalorian theme, today I'm going to show you the process that I use to make this IV-94 blaster that we've seen Dunjar and carry in every episode to date. So let's get started. I found these amazing files that were created by Leonardo Aguirre at Striker Armory. Forgive me Leonardo if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but I've included a link to his page below. Everything was printed on the Ender 3 Pro and the pieces fit on the print bed perfectly. To hold the larger pieces together I use E6000. I like to use this on larger areas because it seems to me that E6000 has a better bond than super glue. The only thing is that it takes a lot longer to cure. Sometimes when using E6000, you may need to clamp some pieces together in order for them to get a secure bond. On pieces that need to be attached quickly, I'll apply CA glue, try to align everything so that's in the correct place, then use Zip Kicker to cure the glue in a split second. But typically for a project like this, I will flip back and forth between E6000 and CA glue. While I finish assembling, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see all our future projects. Once assembled, the blaster can be primed with three coats of a 2-in-1 filler and sandable primer. Sand after each coat and when dry, paint with a black gloss spray paint. Having a shiny black coat helps when we add graphite powder. To make parts of the blaster look like metal, we want to buff some graphite powder on the surface with a cotton ball. This can be a little messy, so you may want to cover your workspace with a protective layer, and you may also want to use gloves if you don't want graphite all over your fingers. Next, I take some metallic gold enamel, mix in a little burnt umber to make a brass color, and brush this onto some of the accent pieces. I found that I needed to apply two coats of this brass to get good coverage, but I didn't want solid coverage, so I left a little bit of the base showing through. To vary the metal surface, I take a metallic silver and brush this onto areas that would receive the most wear and tear, and then I use my finger to blend the paint into the surface. This just creates a little bit of variation so it doesn't look so flat. Next, the grip is based with some burnt umber. This grip will receive the same paint treatment as the stock on the Pulse Phase rifle I did a few weeks ago. When the burnt umber is dry, dry brush some nutmeg brown onto the grip. Once everything is dry, I tape off this area of the nozzle so it can be painted silver. When there's large areas to mask off, I often use plastic wrap so I don't need to use as much tape. To paint this, I just use a metallic silver spray paint. When it's dry, I remove the masking and take some black acrylic with a Q-tip and buff this onto the silver and blend it a little bit with my finger and a paper towel. This will help add some carbon scoring and some aging to the area. I also use the same technique on the grip as well. Then I repeat the process again with some nutmeg brown around the end of the nozzle just to add another layer of aging. Once 
Once all the paint is dry, the blaster can be sealed with a matte clear coat. This will protect the paint and the graphite. I usually use this varnish that is meant for charcoal drawings because it's both matte and it won't affect your paint colors. And there you have it, Din Djarin's IB-94 blaster pistol that he has carried with him through the series. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did and you would like to make one of these for yourself, you can find the link in the below description. Also, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends and family, and subscribe to this channel. And remember, if you are building any of my builds or using any of my templates, feel free and tag me at House of Props on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because I would really like to see your fantastic work. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.